Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 11th episode of the PSR Podcast Season 3. Uh, we're here to talk about the October uh, happenings in PSR. We have myself, Tucker, and Etiquette and Jordan. Hello. Hello, hello. And we also have two guests here to talk about Scarlet Violet with us. Uh, we have Dine. Hello. And Head Bob. Hello. All right, excited to get into it for our October recap. Um, we'll start with just a quick uh, little cool thing that's happening before we get into the noted runs today first. Uh, just just uh, the HeartGold Soul Server Medipolis glitchless tournament is happening right now. We just got done with round two, and we're moving on to the draws tonight for round three. It'll be in about seven hours. So if you're in the tournament or you just want to watch to see who gets paired up with who, you can catch that on this channel later tonight. Indeed. That's right. And to start off our recap, we have a bunch of Gen 1 glitched runs. Uh, they're all by Jadiwi. Jadiwi kind of went on a pretty hard grind for these. Um, we have just yesterday a new red any percent no save corruption world record, uh, eleven sixteen. Um, I myself am not that knowledgeable about how good this run is or how it was performed, but it is an eleven second record, which is very significant. Um, do any yeah. of you have That's massive. any insight on this? Yeah, this run is like one. It's like I think I was talking with uh, Matic about it last night, and he said. It would be take it would like take a lot for this run to be beaten, like if ever, because there's a lot more manipulation in this category than there ever was before. Um, there used to just be this manipulation through forest to get the Pikachu crit, but now there's like a, a manipulation for rival one, and there's some minutes crits you can get on the first couple of fights when you enter back into forest. Um, and then on top of that, Jadi, we got the you got two other crits, I think, that were not minipped, and you got a he, he obviously didn't get any encounters and got a five turn death, which is like pretty good. So if, if it's if this run's ever beaten, it's like not by a large margin for sure, and probably not anytime soon. He definitely grinded this out for quite a while. Yeah, looking at that, so like you get the encounter, like on like the encounter on the tile where the trainer can see you, and then I guess that's gonna mess yeah. stuff up. You trigger a trainer fly, and then when you enter yeah. back into forest, you're gonna get uh, a trainer encounter like as soon as you enter the forest, and then you you beat it twice, and then you like basically get a hall of fame. Because th this is this is very different to the yellow version. Yeah, yeah what I can remember. Like very very different. Like I feel like at this point in the yellow, you'd be doing that weird men like you'd mark menu, but in the forest, it's weird. <laughs> The manip, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Definitely some cool stuff, though. It's always cool. Yeah, it's a pretty neat category. In that case, we'll move on. More 90% stuff. I mean, again, took it. Yep. Uh, this is just. Right, any percent, beat it as fast as possible. Um, Jadubi got the sub 118 on this run, the 117, 8, 9, 3. Um, I mean, this run is very simplistic. All it comes down to, like, is how fast can you execute after hitting the nip. And, um, I know that Jadi was, like, grinding intros a lot. Uh, he actually, like, grinds intros before he does, like, glitchless runs for red. Mm hmm um as his like way of like warming up so but he was saying that, that he was trying no, to uh it's... to like keep pace with these kind of runs but apparently his swaps for the pokemon are like really fast and like i don't know i think i think he's just like very good at this run because poke yeah. was saying he was like gonna contend for record but he just like wasn't feeling up to it i think Only a category where the talent outshines the the luck. Yeah. So, well done, Jadiwi here. 
Um, and we also have the same category for yellow um, in a very similar time as well. A, the first sub 118 for yellow and it's a 117 961. Does anybody know like how different these categories are? I think at, at this all? point, not really at all. Probably slightly different, but I, I have no idea about yellow any percent. But probably just like Pokemon swaps, item swaps, same kind of thing. Just a question. Is yellow, is it 60 FPS? I think so. Yes. Like, well, it's like okay. 59. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's 60. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I think that in that case, the difference is what, like six frames? Something? Three, yeah. six, no, yeah. Four, six frames? That's, that's the difference. <laughs> Yeah, I assume yeah, that everything else is probably much the same. Me being pedantic, I apologize, but I think it that used shot... to be a lot different of a run. But I think like they found that you could just do the same thing in red that you could in yellow. Yeah. Uh, also, shout out to the split name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I think when Jadivi gets like. The red any percent record people are like all right now do yellow now do yellow and he's just like okay fine we'll do yellow god that's not bothering me <laughs> i think that's how this run happened yeah um yeah. that's all we got for gen one runs uh no gen two three four five or six runs this week <laughs> per month yeah so or seven. uh no, there is seven. Or, actually, there is seven. I was right the first time. <laughs> One, seven, and a half. Yeah. So, yeah. guys, take it away. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> All right. This is where we um, shine. Yeah. So th this is a uh, this is brand new run as of yesterday. This is Kicker on Keith getting the Let's Go Pikachu all obtainable Pokemon uh, record in five oh eight ten. Uh, beats the old record by a couple minutes. Um, and this is. Especially notable, uh, it's obviously the best Pikachu time, but it's also the best time in this category without mount skips. Um, the 505 that I have in EV does use mount skips, so um, this you could you could view this as like the overall best time without those. Um, and yeah, it's you know overall just a really solid run. It's a it's a category that has a lot of RNG to it. A lot of things need to spawn uh, in a short amount of time, and. Once you sort of put all that together, uh, you can put together a, a pretty good run like this. I'm not. I shouldn't be the one to criticize here, but what was that first throw? That was. <laughs> Listen. I, mean, I know. I know. I know. It's let's things. go. I know. Let's go is bad. It's it's like sometimes works. the controls just do their own thing, but. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Elsa, yeah, sorry. I, like I cut you off. Especially because it's like a one controller throw here. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. Dratini is not nice. Yeah, Dratini, Dratini is one of the... Uh, th there are three problematic spawns. I mean, some of the other ones can be a problematic as well, but mainly three problematic spawns in an all-obtainable Pokemon run. Um, you've got Dratini here, which is 4%. Um, however, the water is really small and it's hard to see things, so uh, it feels worse than actually 4%. And then you've got a 1% spawn in Rock Tunnel for Kangaskhan and a 1% spawn on Route 15 for either Scyther in Pikachu or Pinsir in Eevee. So um, you really just need like all of those to cooperate. Then you need all the birds to cooperate because you are uh, you only get one Master Ball. So you have to catch the three legendary birds using normal catches, which on average should be about five throws, but sometimes will go up to like 15, 20. Um, so it's, it's definitely a category that, you know, obviously rewards skill, but uh, definitely rewards good luck as well, so. Yeah. Like a quick shout out to, I believe it was a uh, Trevaria who, yes, was, like on one yep. of the first or second, like, go, like going onto the route with Scyther and Taurus, they, like the Taurus spawned, and then the Scyther just spawned there instantly as well. <laughs> yeah, as they put it, they're never going to beat that gold split ever. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Everything with the Let's Go. Yeah, it's it's good to see Let's Go still getting some. Uh, there was a lot of Let's Go love uh, earlier in the year with the tournament, but it's good to see some people still still grinding away at it. 
indeed, indeed. But even even better is uh, the sword shield grind from Head Bob. Head Bob. Yeah. Uh, so this I is. I love sword shield. This is Head Bob's uh, sword any percent without turbo, second place in 40651. Uh, and Head Bob, tell us about this run. So this is the first time that I was able to beat my um, my 80% PV with Sobble, um, with Sobble Drill. I've been grinding this category quite a bit. I just, I, I don't know why, I kind of like it for some reason. Um, because it's, it's like a good really, game. Really painful. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean like this run specifically, I just like All always, right. I always want to go back. <laughs> And so I, I do a lot of like I go back, do like a couple attempts, and then go do something else again. Mm. Um, but yeah, this run was just like fairly quick drill burr. It was like pretty solid stats. Missed only three times. Um, yeah, basically that's basically it. It's just like it's this category is a lot of just like try not to lose too much time instead of like try to save a lot of time because like missing in the wrong spots because the main move you're using in this category is high horsepower. You use it like 70 plus times um <laughs> and so some like a, a maybe like 10 or 15 of them will just kill you so you have to make sure you have to like hit the important ones and not miss too many unimportant ones that's basically the name of the game uh, and so this run just just happened yeah because like, I've, I've not really had much time to look into like this specific route or even just talk with you about this so this is the perfect time because you're on the podcast um, how, what's your thoughts on like comparing this to just double the, the the dumb version of the route that I do I guess if you have those notes um notes. well I mean the sample portion of this route is like fairly similar sometimes I, I, yeah. I skip swift teaching a decent amount of the time and just like because water pulse times three on the gossip floor is a pretty solid range right, um right. so that's the one that's like the one difference I, I often go for the Milo range anyways even though like Ideally, you want to get as many runs as you can to Drover. Um, yeah, it was just I was, I was pretty I was doing pretty top end stuff. Like so, if I wanted to switch to Sobble, I probably would be resetting for a similar amount of luck. I think. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I think after grinding this category a little bit, like while well, the top end of Excadrill is like definitely capable of world record. Um, I, like if you're grinding for world record, I don't see why you would do this. It's like very much a less enjoyable experience, I think. Uh, so at least I know with my run, my, like my own run, like I, I think I got, I got crit on the turn. So I think like mm. four or five, four or four is still possible. I mean, my son is now sub with four, a... but like there's, a decent, there's like so much variance in this category. Oh yeah. It's like, it's like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah the, the realistic like I think like yeah. I mean, I I still think the like the Ringo time still beatable on this patch. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I just you need to really. It's a pain. Run. It'll be a pain to do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there anything else in particular with this this run? What else? What else? Um. I mean, yeah. Like I said, I had really solid stats. and was able to yeah. buy enough carbos to outspeed uh the bear scuda on nessa which is like really fast yeah um go forward the time yeah that's it i assume you've got stats in there at that point in the bottom maybe a bit further in okay yes yeah, so, oh yeah that's that looks good i mean yeah. i was getting on i was getting on a streak where like literally like every single drill where i would get would be either minus attack or minus speed i would just have to mm -hmm. live with it <laughs> But yeah. this is like the first one I got that was like actually kind of decent on a decent pace. Yeah, it's like it's, and it's still it's still not the ideal nature, obviously, because yeah. rash, <laughs> rash on the physical attack is not not you know not fun. But... Just right, pick right, up right. the adamant mint. It's uh, just, it's just that easy. Yeah, j just go to the crown tundra. Like, <laughs> that's clearly not breaking the rules. I will go say that. Cortando. I will say though, um, I do think that Excadrill is better on sword than shield for the section that you use it in. I like the Bia one, the Bia two fight is like really quick the way I have it do it, and then also like Gordy is like really fast as well. So definitely worth yeah. noting, maybe. Yeah, Gordy being fast makes sense. 
Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, I basically just sword stance on Halucha and just sweep. Oh, but... yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, are enough. you talking about Bayou 2? Yeah, Bayou 2. Okay, I thought you were talking about Bayou original, but that... Yeah. It's still, like, similar. It's, like, obviously, like... If you don't if you don't have good defense, this, this defense was, like, good enough. Um, you sometimes don't take two revenges at plus two. So you have to set up another X defend and then do a lot more healing or whatever. So that fight can go a little bit badly if your defenses are bad, but... Um, yeah. just two, it's just you just you get some irons if your defenses are bad, and then you just you take a high jump kick and then sweep the fight. Fair enough. Yeah, um, and like part of the reason why shield is better for like the other Excadrill route that we're actually about to see in a run of um, is not because of the Excadrill section. It's because Arcanine is only in shield. Um, you don't have. Nine Tails just isn't as good at what Arcanine needs to do. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess with that, this is um, a new record for any percent without turbo um, in Shield, also by Headbob. So tell us about this run, too. So this is my first completed run of the category, and it was a lot <laughs> nice. of like, it was pretty carried by luck. Honestly, as you see, I got a level 45 Drillbur here. Um, and as you also see, the early game was definitely not good <laughs> compared to what some of the other top times in this category have gotten. So I just, I basically just got a little 45 drill burr quickly and it was adamant and then I just killed everything. Fair. Um, yeah. <laughs> just what, what was your candy choice? Like, was you, did you do, what are the different, is it like two, 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 one? I know I have a, like a, so just two I candy. So I opted to, um, I think I, because I know Etiquette's route, like, doesn't go for 42s, right? And you, uh, like, unless you're getting the uh, the Route 6 candy. Yeah. And then, I, I, I think I did Josh's route, which doesn't do that. That makes sense. Um. Yeah, and then use two candies after this. Okay. And I candied after, um, Bead, bead 2, though, that's that the fight? Before Carcole. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Because yeah, yeah. the the candy route that I like to do, it's it's something I've known since coming up with it that it makes more sense as a situational strategy. Um, and I just, you know, by the time I came up with it, it was doing like more marathon prep and things like that. So it was like always like, well, this is a safer option. So let me just do this. Yeah. Um, but it essentially it gives you like level twenty five in a nice spot, and then. 28 and then 33 i think it is all in like really good spots for ranges so it's mm. it makes way more sense to be like a situational thing um but the downside is you do have to either go out of your way for that route six candy or just not get level 42 drill burrs. right right um and then if you're not getting a level 42 drill burr, it's like well you could also skip the route four candy uh yeah, which is that's why i do and, and just do one on drill burr, one on arcanine um yeah but it's just then... you always run into the issue of like it, it always just comes down to like hitting 24 for uh for yeah Kabu's gym. it's just like you, you have to do that it's like non-negotiable yeah that's the non-negotiable i the the reason i was going to 25 there was that way you could quick ball the yeah, sizzle yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and not have to deal with that range yeah so I did miss that range on an incomplete run, and it really, really lost me a lot of time. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta do some shenanigans on Kabu without enough ex extreme speed PP. Yep. Yeah. And again, just trying to think—is there any other things to mention in this run? Because I mean, like, so you said this was your first completed run. So is that four hundred nine fifty nine just like dummy splits or? I just made them just because I, like, I, I just made them as a target, just because I, yeah. that was the goal I was aiming for. Yeah, fair. So, it's like, I guess that just speaks to how well this Excadrill did in comparison to, to those, though. Like, it's like an estimate of what you would like, want time-wise. Because you were behind those expected times up until you get this. Yeah, I remember saving a lot of time, like a lot, a lot of time on Raihan 1. Mm -hmm. Um... Because I, I hit all the rock slides and then I crit the Hakamolo. 
dice. Which is normally a two turn fight. That's and, a nice crit, yeah. 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 Um, um, and so yeah, and then I I think I got Rock to miss on Alistair too as well. Nice. That's a good one as well. Um, just thinking, what was your Arcanine again? Uh, I don't remember. I don't think it was like anything too special, up or down. Uh, yeah, general idea maybe wrong. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely not, definitely not bad. It's manageable for sure. Yeah. Is that? Is that in the range? Or is, like, is it 15 for the Dreadnought that's guaranteed yeah, or something? I think it's 15's guaranteed, but like 10's pretty good. And then 10 yeah. guarantees the Weezing, I think, on Opal. Opal's like full of ranges if you have a really bad one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there's a couple ranges you have to go for with that, but overall, like the pl the good special attack is, is really nice. Um, so it's certainly manageable. Yeah, genuinely, I was just trying to finish the runs. I was just like kind of doing whatever, like safety strats. I, I, I was, I was definitely open to doing the NASA candies if I had to do that ever. This one did not have to, but. Um, if, uh... And yeah, definitely, some, definitely some of the fights. Definitely some of the fights. Like when I was first like looking at it, I was like completely confused by how they were laid out, <laughs> and I, I died a couple times to some of them just because I didn't read them properly, but. Um, definitely. I got used to it eventually. Yeah, and you and like with your first run, you are the second person to get a 407 on the 1.2 plus patch. It would have been so much better. I I, I, was, <laughs> I definitely had a, a chance to get um overall world record. Um I think I fumbled the bag on Eternatus and then got King Shield on Leon to actually lose the time, but... Uh, um, a, uh, what was your time again, Etiquette? Mine... So mine's with Turbo, but it's a 407-32. Yeah. I was tied okay. with Etiquette at Eternatus, I think, is what I was looking okay. at, and then I... Um, and then I got King Shield and lost the turn. Uh, unfortunate, but... I mean, re realistically, no, 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 based on either of you. I do think like four oh six is quite realistic still. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, I think is that everything for Sword and Shield. Unless there's anything you want to mention, Hip Hop. I think I'm good. Cool. All right. Uh, so next up, we've got the first of many Scarlet Violet runs, uh, <laughs> all for a pretty similar reason. Um, so this is Chrysosaurus getting the new any percent glitchless record in 52230. Um, and this run, as well as like a lot of the other ones that we're about to show, uh, were certainly made possible or more possible, I should say. Um, by the fact that the latest Switch operating system update, uh, version 17, seems to have uh, improved performance in Scarlet Violet. Um, I think myself, along with some other people, uh, would basically say that it doesn't necessarily feel better, but when you actually look at your splits, you can see you just saving time in places that don't make sense to save time. So um, the game's definitely running a bit better, uh, which is nice because we've all kind of been waiting for that but at the same time it didn't happen because of a pokemon update it happened because of the switch update so right oh, no. and yeah. the funny thing that is juxtaposed by the the dlc patch with that came out with the teal mask that ended up making the main game significantly worse for a couple of reasons one yeah. of which in uh, in any percent and starfall street you visit the poison base and you fight atticus and I believe it was Corolio that found this out first, that uh, d depending on luck, because we have absolutely no idea what causes this, uh, you can just get a two and a half minute load after poison base when you're loading into the penny cutscene for no apparent reason whatsoever. 
Yeah. And so uh, this, obviously this particular run did not get that penny load or the, the Atticus load. Um, so that, that certainly helped out. Um, the other thing that's uh, specific only to any percent right now is for some reason we're losing about like 45 seconds in area zero, uh, which is, you know, a bit disheartening uh, just because like you can see if you look at these splits uh, for crisis, like he's two minutes ahead, three minutes ahead at some points. Um, didn't have the best run overall. Like, I think if I remember right, he got like poisoned in the Elite Four, uh, missed a few late game ranges on specifically like the wild Pokemon in Area Zero. But like that final split, even though you're like two minutes ahead, that final split you lose 50 seconds on um, through basically no fault of your own. So uh, it's still kind of in a weird place. Um, any percent and Starfall specifically, but, um, you know, any percent because of that area zero stuff. So we're still all kind of holding out a little bit of hope that there will be some sort of future update that fixes some of this stuff, uh, especially the random long loads. Like, that's not really something that's something that happens enough that uh, they'll probably do something about it. But we'll see. Um and yeah, so this this beats the old record by uh, just a few seconds, like 15 seconds. So uh, certainly improvable with all of the other time saves uh, with the patch. Uh, but for now, I don't think many people are going to be gunning for any percent. There is uh, going to be definitely one more update uh, in like a month and nine days. Yeah, because there'll be the second DLC round dropping. So... We'll see. With that, you'll have to complete any percents. It will be a very long category for sure. Oh, is that confirmed? The way they yeah. phrased it, it seems like it, yeah. Oh. Ah. Guess it's technically like actually catch Calyrex as opposed to get get to Calyrex. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll have to see when the day comes, but that is what we are expecting at the moment. Fair, fair. All right. Um, so the second Scarlet Violet run we've got here, uh, this is truly with the new Scarlet, uh, Victory Road world record in 2.12.52. Um, truly coming back to this category, uh, with the new update and everything, and definitely, you know, showing a lot of the time save that you get from that. Um, as well as this just being overall a pretty solid run. Uh, if I remember right, it didn't have, there's a really big RNG section at the very end of the run where you can get poisoned in the Elite Four, um, and that typically wastes like 30, 35 seconds. Uh, so it didn't end up with that, uh, and was also able to get an early Hariyama, which is um, which is really nice. It basically eliminates having to take a detour right before the final gym. Uh, you need Hariyama as a uh, partner Pokemon for the eighth gym, so uh, able to catch that probably coming up here um, as soon as he gets into the cavern. And um, yeah, it's it's one of those trade offs. It's a faster way of getting the Hariyama, uh, but it is slower in battles. So uh, the Hariyama you get here is level 41 to 44, I think it is. Uh, whereas yeah. if you catch it later, it's level 55. So you end up with yeah. slightly worse fights, but the overhead of catching it is so much lower. I think there's also an element of risk associated with early Hariyama as well. Yes. If it gets targeted down uh, by Mimikyu with Slash, because you ended up using Belly Jump in order to Oko the Mimikyu after you break his disguise. So when you're at that low HP, you're just at risk of getting knocked out. Also, I still find it funny that Hariyama has a higher catch rate than Akihita. It's Very so quirky. Weird. It's so funny. I mean, you've got it's more... honestly, it's one of those things. So, like, Scarlet Violet has a catch penal, like a catch rate penalty. It's not as strict as uh, Sword and Shields, but there is a penalty if you're catching something that is out of your obedience range. Um, with a quick ball, that level forty, uh, with only two badges. Because you can you can potentially get a Hariyama in the tunnel on the way to the normal like the normal gym town, um, with two badges, 
that Hariyama at that high level is still a guaranteed catch in a quick ball. What? <laughs> yeah. Like That's it's insane. It's a ridiculously high catch rate. <laughs> is that with a back strike? Even with that might be with I know that this one is with three badges, this is guaranteed without a backstrike. It might be with a backstrike on two badges, but I don't remember for sure. Uh, Actually, that's, I've never thought about like the catch rate stuff. So like, so like for sword shield, anything that's above the the badge limit you can't catch. Mm -hmm. Anything that's higher than you but below the badge limit has that like a tenth, I think, or like a, an eight. Yeah, it's like ten percent. Yeah. It's yeah. Is there that? Is there anything similar to that in this or? Yeah, but it scales. Um, so I don't remember the exact formula, uh, but essentially it's like above your obedience cap is worse, but it gets worse the higher the level. So, like for example, I just pulled up the the catch rate calculator. A Hariyama in a quick ball at level forty one with two badges is 87.5 percent to get in if you were to go for the level 55 it'd be 62 percent so like it gets worse the higher you are um but it's not not really that bad at all in the grand scheme of things and i also okay. want to say it's for every five levels yeah so like a level 51 and a level 55 have the same catch rate but as soon as you hit level 50 it goes up to 74 percent okay Interesting. Yeah. I wish, I wish that was in full shield. <laughs> yeah. No, th this yeah. is a... I think this is a really good way to do it. It makes it so you can catch anything. Like, it is possible to catch anything. Uh, but there is obviously some sort of penalty, but the penalty is also not egregious. Yeah. Also, best part of the run. Oh, my God. Because it runs so slowly. <laughs> So slow. At least you don't have to do every single one of these. It's so nice. <laughs> That's was it was it was it Amber that found that? Yeah, it was. Amber's, yeah, it was one of those things we like knew it was gonna be possible, but no one wanted to actually do the testing. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, same category, different runner. Uh, so this is myself getting second place uh, with a two thirteen forty one. Uh, this run was pretty similar to Truly's actually. Um, I was looking at the splits after the fact, and up until the doubles gym, uh, we're more or less even. Uh, and what Dynam was saying earlier about ha getting targeted by Slash and all that stuff, uh, making the lower level Hariyama a little bit more dangerous is essentially what happened to me. Um, so I lost a bit of time on Rhyme, uh, and then I also got the uh, getting poisoned. Um, or at least I believe I got poisoned on the Elite Four, uh, but also I got crit on one of the Elite Four fights that you take damage on, so I had to heal mid-battle and all that stuff, so... Lost quite a bit of time in the end game, um, but certainly a nice PB to have. Um, and this is one of those where I actually do feel like this PB was better. Obviously carried a little bit by the uh, the switch update, but I do feel like this PB was better than my old PB, so uh, I'm a, quite a bit happier with that. That's always good. So I still find I agree. it wild. I find it wild that it's it's Nintendo that made it better, not even Game Freak. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. Continuously just blows my mind about that. Yeah, because it like Dynam said, like even outside of the loading issues, like there were other areas that it's like the game just feels like a little bit worse. It feels a bit worse. Um, and then the Switch update came about, and it was like, wait a second. Now everyone's randomly saving time. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. We don't know exactly how much time is saved, uh, based on in-game time alone, my guess for any percent is about two minutes. Um, 
purely because of in-game time. Uh, if in-game time is constant, then, you know, with, with the lag either being a little bit worse or better, whatever, uh, the in-game time would be about the same. Uh, and we're seeing roughly two minute difference between a run pre-update and a run uh, on the current update. Now that also has like the really bad part of area zero. So it might actually be a bit better and then lose a bunch of time in area zero. So it could be about one to two minutes in a lot of these other smaller categories as well. I remember the day before everyone came together and was like, wait, I think we're actually saving time. I was just doing teal mask runs and I was just thinking to myself, this feels a little bit like cleaner. I don't know why. I don't know why it does. Yeah, I, 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 I've definitely done that before. And then I was spending just spend complete placebo, but it was like crazy to actually be like, oh, it actually was like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the day that I realized it was I was also doing a teal mask speed run and uh, the run that I had was absolutely atrocious and should not have PB'd. And then it did. And then I think it was Spider who ended up going back and retiming my old PB to my new one. And the last cutscene was just straight up 10 seconds faster, yeah. excluding loading times. The dialogue just went by faster. It's crazy. I had no idea that was a thing until the end of my PB when Zypotic just like casually said that to me. I was like, there's no way you're serious. <laughs> and lo and behold, here we are. All of you are talking about teal mask, and it's one run too early because there's one run left that we need to talk about. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right. Segue. Yeah. Ruining the segue. I'm sorry. I'm I'm, I'm the one ruining it. it. I'm the one ruining it. <laughs> Not you. You're doing great. I mean, to be fair, Dynam's run here is the reason that you had to to ruin it. So maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is their maybe. fault. Um, but maybe. Yeah. This uh, this is the. The final one of the um, single story runs, Dynam got a 126.46 in Starfall. So tell yeah. us about the run, Dynam. Yeah, this run was, it was a good run. It definitely was basically carried by the fact that there was a Switch system update. Um, fun fact, this was my first day trying out Quackable in Starfall Street. Before this, my previous PB, which I think was like a 129, was with a Haunch Crow route that I did. That was not at all close to competitive. It was just fun to route. Um, but had a really good duck that I rolled. Um, 26 plus attack and 21, I think 21 or 27 speed. 27 speed. Um, basically meets all the thresholds that you need to, to clear during this run. Uh, this fight on Ortega, uh, there's two ways that you can approach the fight. One with a guard spec to prevent charm, which I got turn one, uh, but was kind of negated by the fact that I just X attacked twice. So the turn count was pretty even on that. Uh, I think there was one encounter during this run, one overworld encounter. But other than that, I don't really have any complaints about this run. Uh, at the end, the Clavel fight went, went really well. Uh, got double yawn into Dream Eater. So saved a lot on animations there due to yawn and Dream Eater failing for the second time. And then I think on the Penny fight at the very end, uh, skip guard spec again and just went for the double x attack strat uh which is really risky because every single one of penny's evolutions knows baby doll eyes which means that you'll have to figure out a way to set up back to i think at least plus three or plus two depending on your hp uh for her final pokemon sylveon uh so also no poison based load i think that's another reason why People have been staying far away from the Starfall Street category. I know. Uh, I know when Iron and Crisis have both tried to do Starfall Street, they both got slammed with the poison base load. But I've been very fortunate to not experience it at all so far. Um, yeah, well, overall, definitely can be improved for sure. This was not the best of runs in terms of Let's Go's or or Star Barrages, but I'm pretty happy with this for now. Uh, just out of curiosity, what switch? Uh, what switch do you have? Uh, I run on the original switch. Um, okay. Release right. version switch. Yeah, I think. I like where your head's at. Yeah, I was going. I was going <laughs> to shoot like, oh, it might, if it's like the old switch, like that would make sense for like the long load. But if you're really like the old switch, then. 
Yeah, I don't think... Un think unless it's inverse and the new, like the OLED's the one with the long load well, times. Well, I was going to say... messed I, up. <laughs> I've done it. I've gone through the, the poison base at least twice since the update with my OLED switch, and I'm not, I've not actually had the load yet. Uh, uh, right, ever, fair. so... I think there's a small discussion on the, the PSR court about who's got what switch, <laughs> and we eventually determined that it was a non-factor. So, still have no idea what causes the poison base load, but... There'll be something dumb. There's always something dumb. So true. But yeah, I think if that's everything, um, shall we go straight into the focus topic then? Or do you want a break? If anyone needs to take a moment. I'm good to keep pushing. I'm good either way. Yeah. Sure. All right. Solid. All right. So, yeah, I mean, I yes. think it's still you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, do you want to pull up? Um, oh, uh, yeah. I forgot to pull yeah. it up. I was dumb. No, it's There's always good. something. <laughs> All right. So, uh, this was a category that we uh, was available to, to talk about last podcast, um, but we opted to wait. A month just for everything to mature a little bit um and it's kind of good that we did just because of the whole switch update allowed the right. times to go even lower um but this is the teal masks uh speed run so this is the the speed run to beat the dlc um what you're seeing on screen now is sort of like the first route that was come up with uh this is um carlio a japanese runner who uh came up with this route using espathra um and the main one of the main things that uh, this run sort of centers around is there's probably like, you know, like five or six different battles. Uh, but then there are three, uh, quote unquote, Titan battles. And all three of the Titans have similar typings. Um, they're the new uh, the loyal three Pokemon, the Monkey Dory, Okie Dogi and Fezzendipity. Uh, and they're all poison. They're all part poison. And so uh, pretty early on, a lot of people were thinking, you know, good psychic types, maybe good ground types, things like that to try and deal as much damage as possible to those um, Titans, just because they're they're going to be the fights that are going to take the most, you know, where your power move power is going to be the most important. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this this was sort of the first route uh, that was come up with uh, Espathra's Particularly really good because of its signature move, Lumina Crash. Uh, Lumina Crash is effectively psychic, but it guarantees a double special defense drop. Um, so you can sort of do compounding damage uh, to all these loyal three Pokemon, and it works out really well. Uh, pretty soon after this route was done, uh there was a there were a couple of other mains um i know dynam uh you were working on the gallade route yeah uh, along with spider and spider was working on the opposite end of the the curly chain for gardevoir mm -hmm. um and you i think actually the same time as got beaten by the current main uh gallade actually beat as as well uh, right like right before or right after yeah i think uh the current main and gallade both ended up getting 144s mm -hmm. pretty much right after spathra was almost established as the main yep um and then yeah uh like Danim said 144 came about um i think it was actually you head bob uh with metacham yeah so i mean i basically did just seen that like iron was like routing metacham I, I had done a spot the runs and I, I just like looked a little bit at like Iron's Metacham run and I was like, wait, this thing is like kind of like really good against the Pokemon. So I just like Iron's route at the time was like very like safe and like, um, like accounted for a lot of different things. I lost a lot of time. So I kind of just cut all those out. <laughs> and so as a result, the run was like, obviously as is, like you're using Zen Headbutt and um, High Jump Kick as your main moves for Metacham. But then on top of that, um, you get to save a lot of time by not setting up on Carmen 5. If you reset for a speed IV that's like 20 or higher. And then you need Terra Psychic. Um, 
for this fight to be like reasonably consistent um and then like a decent enough attack stat um and then after that um iron uh changed my route a little bit he got a bunch of extra experience we were originally getting uh three exp m's um like right at the very start of the run before you actually enter the teal mask portion that um this is back in like the espathra era that loses like 45 seconds mm -hmm. but we just, we ended up like defaulting to the fact that like the fact that you have that like has a lot of extra experience the fact that you can just get that all at once it allows you to skip other stuff um so as a result iron's modern route skips the rare candy and mesagoza and the muscle band uh purchase and mesagoza as well um so that, that almost entirely makes up for the that time that you lose getting the m's and so that's where the route is today i think and then i think uh dynam's still working on galade and all along the side they could one day overtake yeah we'll see how the resets go <laughs> the thing about uh, the thing about Galade and Garavar is that there's a static Curlia that you can get within Kitakami itself, uh, but optimally to get there, it takes 20 minutes. So you can basically run all the way over to the the plateau where Curlia is and see that it's not the Curlia that you want, and it's back to the lab, or back to school in this case, I suppose. Yeah, I think the the general idea is like physical psychic types do well and then a spot where it gets a pass because its signature move is broken exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. medicham also has a leg up on a spather in terms of xp curve right it's medium fast instead of medium slow uh yeah for that fortune yep yep it's and then the raw slide is just slow and it's pain <laughs> yep. yeah the the main reason why i mean I'm, at least i would assume the main reason why physical is a little bit better than special um so the the titans all also have their own uh stat boost so pheasantipity gets a speed boost um and then the okidogi uh which is the fighting poison type gets a defense boost while monkey dory gets uh is poison psychic and gets a special defense boost um if you're using psychic moves the de the defense boost for okidogi kind of gets offset by the fact that it's 4x weak to to psychic um, and then if you go back to, uh, the monkey Dory gains that special defense boost, but your psychic moves are also not even super effective. So, uh, that's why a really needs it. It's more so for the, the monkey Dory than anything. Um, because your first Lumina crash does maybe like an eighth of damage to the, uh, to the Pokemon and then you know, you just start doing more and more after that. Yeah, I, I think just like the fact that like, like obviously the Okidoki gets a defense boost, but it almost like kind of cancels out because it's already four times weak to it. Yeah. Versus the Monkey Dory is, is neutral, but it doesn't get a defense boost and it also doesn't have very good defense. Um, So you're, you're like doing a decent amount of damage to all the main Titans, which is like all that you really care about for the most part. I know yeah. Iron's route had a uh, had like a pivot to Psybeam for Okidogi if you had good enough special attack. Is that viable for uh, for like world record strats? Because on the same time frame as just X attacking te and Terra's and headbutt. Um, I don't know. I think it's like I mean, it basically just allows you to have to hit one less than headbutt. It's do it doesn't really like come up that much otherwise, besides like the early Kieran fights and and the okie dokie fight um definitely not worth resetting for that's for sure but Got it. It, like it, it definitely helps if you happen to have it yeah i mean that, that's all interesting but like um i guess also well this is is this the third month or like the third podcast where this room would be now or was it just coming out or the last one i think it released on the 13th of september yeah that's right yep so, so we had nothing on september or uh, what the august podcast i guess it would be and then then the last podcast we were still kind of just developing it a little bit it was still kind of just a work in progress uh, 
So, actually, I, and then I guess it's just like, with the, did the Switch update happen after the Eel Mask update? Yeah. It's just getting the timeline mm -hmm. for everything. So then, I assume that's affected this run as well then. Yep. Yeah, because oh, a lot lower, actually. I mm. want to say, like, the, the record was like a 143, maybe? Yeah, um, and then Head Bob basically posted a 142, just saying like LOL. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like it was kind of absurd how much time was saved in this. Yeah, and then Zyphotic just dropped it by another minute. It's just, it's like it's like easily I know the any percent has like its its time saves and its time losses. This is just like straight time save in every part of the run. It just saves a, a boatload of time for this sort of a run. I think I quickly skimmed through Zypotic spot, and I don't think they got a single crit, and I don't think they missed a single. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, his run was great, but like, yeah, it's like crazy how much time it actually saved the new update. I was gonna say, uh, or I was gonna ask, given you know it being a 141, do we think a 139 is possible, or is that probably a little bit too out there? I think without a different route, it would okay. be tough. Yeah. I guess the question is, how much optimization is there in this route? In terms of like, if you go for even stricter, oh, pardon me, uh, hiccup there, uh, for even stricter uh, stats. I think his metacham was already pretty good. I think, again, similar to Sample Drill, it's just like, try not to miss. It's like the, the if, you, if you don't miss you don't lose time and that's about it yeah. and then hitting 43 i think on on this fight Kieran five is currently not negotiable just due to due to ranges and whatnot either that or you have to either set up more hit more super effectives than you already do or i know on um on carmen three um there's a way you could save like o over my route you, like I was like high jump kicking the Mightyena and like basically just taking the super effective text along with setting up. And I mm -hmm. think Iron Throw has you do either or. Like you cannot, you can just go plus or minus one and just use super effective moves or go plus one and skip super effective moves. And then for this fight, um, Yan Mega and Glyce are of the same speed. And so you want to make sure you are faster than that so you don't have to set up. So those are the big, those are the big two things. Oh, I forgot how to have the promo pass. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's it, yeah, it's just seeing this Pokemon. It's like, how is this a Pokemon? <laughs> yep. This is something with my route where I was like, okay, we just use Ice Punch and then High Jump Kick uh, to not use one ninety percent move, and then I, I came to the realization that oh wait, if you miss the High Jump Kick, you just die. So I was like, okay, people, maybe let's not do that. <laughs> well, to be fair, we could uh, talk about your run a bit more in detail because yours is also here. Um, no, I, I just picked a random spot. Tell me to go somewhere else. If no, 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 that's not it. It's just. Um, no, I'm just saying that because this is the Ogre Pond cutscene. I'm, I'm, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember what actually happened during this run. What do you mean? Um, it's not Ogre Pond. It's a small child. So true. Um, yeah, basically it was like the first run I had done that, because all the previous runs I had done, um, I either didn't have Terra Psychic for Fezzidipity and I just kind of stuck it out, or, um, for, I mean, the, the standard fight for this route is basically just Terra Psychic and you just, you just kill it. And it saves a lot of time. Um, and I hadn't actually gotten that um, on any run before this. And until this one, so I saved a lot of time on that. And then I also got really good Monkey Dory, really good Okie Doki, um, mediocre everything else. And that was that was about it. So I did get an encounter on on Kieran too that I couldn't run away from, and I almost died to that. Oh, well, we've got to find that then. <laughs> oh yeah, because the beginning of the run, you uh don't have to win against uh, the first Carmen and Garen fight. Um, it was much earlier on, like basically the start of the split. Oh. Yeah, and so you do a bunch of candy collection, kind of like you do in the normal any percent run. Um, and then 
and then you like withdraw your actual main Pokemon rather than just having like Lechonk in your party. And so uh, if you run into a Pokemon, it is pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, you usually run killing if you don't have your... Yeah, it's around here. Uh, I think it's over there. Maybe. Yep, there we go. <laughs> with, a Le... with a Lechonk as well. Level 3 Lechonk versus level 15 Puchiana. I was feeling <laughs> merciful that day. Yeah, usually that's like a run over that happens when you have Lechonk in your party, which is why a bunch of runners opt to just deposit early, which is completely fair. <laughs> Yeah, I guess overall though, like, um, does do like, it, I guess just as the first question: Is the DLC for Scarlet Violet actually fun to run? Like, is this fun to run? I don't know. I don't know. How to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I, the one thing I will say is, it it really felt like when the game first came out again just in terms of like trying to figure out what's the good main Pokemon, where are all the items like, are we grabbing this candy? Like, oh, I didn't know about that. Candy. Like it was it was really fun those first like week or so just because of, you know, trying to figure out a, a brand new game almost. Um, but it is a very story driven uh, run, which can be very hit or miss. So. Yeah, and the thing about the story is that most of the exposition that you get within this run is kind of in the middle of the run, as opposed to at the at the beginning or the end of like other oh, yeah. Pokemon runs. Um, there's also two minutes of just chilling out during Ogre Ousting, so... True. I That's mean, honestly, good time for a bathroom break. Sporkle time. Sporkle time. <laughs> Sporkle time. <laughs> Sporkle time. <laughs> yeah. True. But yeah, but, that's, that's, that's like kind of what I live for, is like the... Uh the new like the new game buzz just like finding new new pokemon to consider and new routes and new experience routes and new damage calcs and stuff that's that's my favorite part for sure i personally really enjoy the music of the dlc though and honestly it's oh, yeah. like a huge like draw for me to speedruns like starfall was my like favorite speedrun for a while because of the penny theme kieran 2 or like the final kieran fight theme just slaps so hard it's gonna murder us in the indigo disc i know it <laughs> yeah that's that's actually another thing worth bringing up so the the second part of the dlc is going to be dropping next month uh so we won't be able to talk about it on next podcast but maybe in january um and slight spoilers if you don't want to know but uh the it should be a continuation of this dlc story-wise um but also it's potentially going to be requiring you to beat the game in order to access so uh, we might not have a, like a typical single story run that starts at school um like we do for this category but uh it could be could be something to look out for for speed runs because who knows especially if they if they somehow improve the game a little bit make that poison based load not happen <laughs> um, we'll see I guess there's a, a bit of a follow-up question for this category, though. And you mentioned how it's uh, fun routing like the new Pokemon last, I think. Is there anything lined up for like a Teal Mask alt main run? Like how for Soul and Shield there was the Isle of Armor alt mains? And if there is an idea, is there a potential place where that is being decided or being thought of potentially? So it's definitely been talked about other than people doing runs like Ispathra runs or Gallade runs or like that thinking it's the best Pokemon uh, I don't really know of anyone actively doing it but I mean I don't see why it can't be a thing I think I know, foresee it happening in the future surely yeah I know my community wants me to run Dawn fan still so, so sure. yeah we're still waiting no Zeiss Fang the TM's right there by the cave the TM is right there <laughs> Yeah, because I know that what well, at least uh, well, you, like there's been some Scarlet Violet stuff, right? For uh, what is it, the Cat X Expo Discord? Oh, have I got that name wrong? I always forget. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like yep. yeah, Cat X Expo. Yeah, the current 
uh, category for this month is uh, beat all four treasures of ruin in Paldea. Good category. Does it make a fun question. category? That's a good question for that. Is it a fun category? Yeah. 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 Because I see it, like, to me, that sounds like a lot of movement. It is. It is nice that there's only, like, three cutscenes in it, so you don't have to, like, spend a whole lot of time waiting around. There's a lot of, like, technical movement that you have to do, and there's a lot of movement routing that we've been we've been doing as well. I know Amber, Spider, and I, like, sat down for, like, an evening and just compared notes and came up with a route for it. So that was, that's was that been pretty fun to be a part of. Yeah. And do you have your own route etiquette or I do. I only I've only been able to do it like once or twice. Um but I'll have time uh coming up soon. I mean the month is five days in, so Yeah. <laughs> that is true. Uh and I I don't think you're in the you're not in the dunk tournament anymore, are you? I am not, no. Uh more time for Pokemon. Exactly. <laughs> and, and Donk Asyncs, I guess, as well. But So true. I'll probably hop on the train at some point as well. Seems like a fun category. But actually, as well, for, for the Cat X Expo stuff, is it purely Switch? Or is that just because the people in there mostly know Switch right now? I think. Basically that? I think so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah, it was it's a it's a thing started by uh Spider, Iron, Dynam, uh, and then a bunch of us have sort of hopped in as well. Um mostly Spider and Iron. I just kind of came along for the ride at the Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's basically like the group of what is it like 10 to 15 of us right now. Um we effectively get a new category every month. Um, either something that's been routed before that people, you know, want everyone to sort of jump in on or like in a lot of cases so far, it's been something that's been brand new. Um, and so like, this is something I don't think before Halloween, I don't think anybody had actually done this category. So it is pretty cool. And there is the link in chat that spider posted. Uh, if people want to check it out. Like we said, it is primarily Switch games right now, uh, but there's no reason it has to be. Yeah. I'm just trying to think if there's anything to mention specifically. Do you want to touch upon last month's Cadex? Cadex Expo or not? Are we, we going to do that in the future? I guess I'll come up in leaderboard round. I mean, if you want to talk, because like, I don't, I don't know much what's been happening. I I'll, just, I happened to join a couple of days ago because I wanted to be nosy. The the leaderboard <laughs> roundup's not going to touch on it because it doesn't have the category extensions, right, Jordan? Uh, it does not because again, yeah. they they treat so for anyone for just for watching. Um, very late setting up for this podcast because trains in the UK are terrible. Currently, <laughs> I say currently, it's been a thing for ages. But so uh, yeah, they just got cancelled and I wasn't able to do anything. Ashley, uh, oh, it's finished. Cool, that's good to know at least. <laughs> at least we have a leaderboard roundup. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Uh, so last month the the category was Urshifu alt main in Sword and Shield. So uh, not a trade alt main. So you actually did have to go to the Isle of Armor, do the Isle of Armor story, get a Kubfu, get an Urshifu, and then beat the game with that. Uh, and I think you, Head Bob, had the best time? Yeah, it was basically just like, um, you know, everyone kind of routed it by themselves. Um, people did. There, there was like no like consensus whether Dark One was better or the Water One was better. And then there were people playing on Sword and Shield. It, it was just like, it, it wasn't like one person had one route and then everyone just like kind of used it to, to get a time. Everyone just kind of came to their own route and then just did their own runs which is mm -hmm. I, I guess kind of what the idea of the, the event is just like you know promote routing cadex but yeah. I, I thought it was a lot of fun i think i'm more ex I'm very excited to do more of these in the future also it just, like just in terms of like a, a swish or actually even more just like an old mate because like at least on the switch side of things i, I feel like trade old mains have 
pretty much taken over that into the like a routing thing. Like, mm -hmm. It's very rare you'll have people route alt main specifically. But yeah. Alt mains are they're fun. They're fun to route. I love alt mains. I, I, I'd yeah. much rather route an alt main than a, a trade alt main, like personally. But yeah. Yeah, the, I think for me personally, the main problem with an alt main, especially in the Switch games, is let's say I want to catch something in the wild area of Sword and Shield. I have to play for 30 minutes to find out I have minus attack. Mm. Um, <laughs> and like Scarlet Violet makes that a little bit better, but also Scarlet Violet because of like mints and stuff. But Scarlet Violet has its own issues of, well, every main is just going to collect X number of candies and then steamroll everything. So it's going to be a little bit less interesting than it would be in another game. So I think there's just a and then you've got like Let's Go is a little bit different because like your main doesn't really matter until you're two hours in because of the way the catch mechanics work and everything. So like there's there's kind of like a problem with each one of the Switch games, I think. Mm -hmm. or at least when I'm thinking about it, um, mm -hmm. like BDSP is just bad. And then well, yeah. <laughs> legends, legends, you don't really use a main. So like everyone has like a little bit of an issue, but they're right. definitely fun to think about. I will say, at least for the switch point, we could just start in the wild area. That was actually a something that Gavin had brought up in in the Cadex discord is starting at the meetup spot in the wild area when you get introduced and then time ends after you beat uh after you beat Raihan so you exclude the like the tedious beginning and the tedious elevator scene at the end among other things oh yeah that was similar more to like, uh, uh treasure, like treasure hunt yeah exactly like similar yeah. to for like, be like an all badges kind of run yeah yeah that sounds way better That's yeah i don't hate that at stuff. all <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like it's Kyrie extension. If enough people do it, I, mean, I guess then, yeah. Not to cause more problems, <laughs> not to like cause more work for Kyrie extensions uh, for the Sword and Shield. But yeah, people could do that if they, re if no, they really wanted to. Hmm? No, but it sounds interesting. I, I definitely would, yeah. would do a run of that. Yeah, at the very least, it makes it more like digestible and accessible for people who can't do a four plus hour run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just think we should be all be playing more Sword and Shield because they are great runs. I'm not gonna say great game per se, but <laughs> they're good runs. Yeah, I mean, I I will say I only did like I only got one of those Urshifu runs in. Um, and I never got back after I did some rerouting, but the the playing and routing I did, I missed that game. That's such a fun run. Yeah. I need to it's spend more time with Sword and Shield. I got sidetracked with the Let's Go tournaments and yep. never came back. I remember I had a lot of fun with just like going to, um, well, I mean, first, first and foremost, I, I love like just like getting raid Pokemon from Wild Area and using mm -hmm. those. But then also, like, I always liked going to the Isle of Armor and getting, like, TRs via Cramomatic. So that was really exciting as well. So, like, I, I sometimes I'll just, like, when I'm when I'm feeling bored, I'll just do, like, an unrouted one of those on the, on the fly. Just, like, figure yeah. it out as I go. <laughs> what was it? So, like, this was, like, ages ago at this point. But I was doing, like, I was routing for Alone on the Executor Alt Main. Oh, the Diglett one? You get that by Diglett, yeah. right? Yeah, you gotta get it by Diglets. So I, I, I literally have like a fairly optimized Diglet route to actually get enough, and then I just never awesome. did the room because I never, I never finished like routing like the end bits for whatever reason. I got distracted or something. I don't know what. But wait, how many Diglets do you have to find? Um, 50? seventy-five, I think it is. Seventy-five. Oh my gosh. What? I think it's seventy-five. <laughs> I, I'll, I'd need to double check that. It's either 50 or 75 for an executor. That's doable without the bike, right? Yeah, like it is. It is. Yeah, you I want to say you've you... got like 80 of them yeah. available. So, oh my 75, god. 75, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and given the rules of... Because um, like, like, you kind of... You don't want to walk around the whole island. like. But you can, you can technically get the bike before if you follow yep. the current rules, but... 
I mean, that's yeah, so funny. You, yeah, if in theory you just die from the wild area, that's another 30 minutes off. That, that makes it a lot more interesting. But anyway, that that's the Soul Shield tangent. Good game. It, like, yeah, good game. Uh, th this was meant to be a Scarlet Teal Mask. <laughs> yeah. <DLC. laughs> We've just progressed. <laughs> I, I I'm saying I'm gonna not regress, progressed. True. That's right. Progressed for Soul Shield. Um But yeah. Um also because uh you know I'm not sure the time. Uh Tucker's dipped off. Uh Tucker is going to be on GTQ in like probably thirty minutes. That's right. So we will try and finish up before then. And to be fair, there isn't too much more because as we go on to the marathon runs I was only able to find one marathon, so <laughs> um, for Feed the Kids 2023, uh, DeCasta uh, on the 23rd, which is actually, uh, from the looks of it, the very first run run. Uh, I don't know what Thanksgiving festivities is going to be for this, um, but at uh, on the 23rd of November at 10pm UK time, uh, Pokemon Stadium 2, Jim Lee DeCastle. Uh, I'm going to guess round one. Oh, whatever the specific thing is, but Jim Lee the Castle. So, there we go. And as I quickly go, I say quickly, I'm being so slow doing this. But, um, Lead Ball Roundup. As always, if there are any runes, I don't think there is anything else before this. I haven't forgot anything, right? I don't think so, no. Before Red, Blue, Glitchless? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah, I think I think we're all good. Um, oh, okay, never mind. I I will say there's a decent chance because, like I said, we didn't have too much time, and this is normally how I find the uh, the world records for the for the side games. So we may stop off there for some of those, but otherwise, um, yeah, for any of these earlier runs, um, if there are any that stand out, feel free to mention them. Like for example. Uh, in fourth place for any percent glitchless classic, Yujito with a one fifty seven thirteen. Well played, well done. It's a very good time. Yeah, Dewey as well with a sub two, a one fifty nine eleven. Same category. Yellow seventh place for El Revolver, a two oh eight thirty five, and any percent glitchless classic. Uh, the rare Gen Two runs. Oh, there's actually Gen Two runs. Yeah. Holy. Wow. Uh, two of them are Etienne, to be fair, and they are the same run. Um, <laughs> Gold. Anyway, but hey, never gets runs. Yeah, I'm. I to be fair, like two two runs for gold. Like for gold silver, I think it's that might be more than the last two months combined minimum. <laughs> Maybe. So, yeah. um, so like. Gold silver, like gold and silver, popping off this uh, this past month. <laughs> Etienne with a three twenty three eleven, and then Jazzy with any percent uh, a nine twenty. Uh, Crystal as well, even with a wow, wow. Four. wow. Okay, Maybe. that feels like it's been at least two years. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, wait, no, no. Manipulus actually has had some runs. To be fair, I think that Manipulus tends to the old runs. But it's 17th for Saito, 22 uh, a 338-24. No one runs Crystal. It's such a tough run to get into. Yeah, yeah no, you're not doing Manipulus. I'm not blaming yeah, yeah. anyone. <laughs> like, I'm definitely not blaming anyone. Manip's Crystal but, is rough. Yeah. Uh, Kyrilovich for Anderson English was for Ruby Sapphire, a 204-22. Uh, Ocean Bagel in 28th as well with a 2.12.08. Um, accidentally starting the run on Undertale splits. So, cool. Nice. Well done. Nice. Whoop. Should have just switched to Undertale, to be fair. Good game. Yeah, stop and fact, swap from Pokemon to Undertale. I'm down. Yeah, Yeah. very similar games. <laughs> yeah, just do, just do one dying in Pokemon. Makes perfect sense. Uh, Farrell uh, Tibbs in 6th on emulator 203.33 and then just behind in 7th. 
Chandanoi? Yeah. Chandanoi? Yeah. It's yep. like... If it was... I feel like if I saw like an English flag, I would have just gone like the full English, but there's a French <laughs> flag, so I'm like, oh, do I have to try and say this with a French bit to it? And I definitely didn't anyway. Uh, but a 203.47. Uh, Emerald, ninth for Yoshida, uh, Yoshida Shu, someone who you typically tend to see with Switch, uh, for Switch for I feel. Mm -hmm. Um, at least, m maybe that's just me with a Switch brain. But any percent glitch list on a uh, Japanese console, a uh, 32139. Uh, line in seventh for Platinum, any percent glitch list, uh, a 34319. I think he's since kind of 339, maybe I'm wrong on that, but... Maybe. Is... Um, yeah, uh, like, to be fair, this is, this is as fresh of a leaderboard roundup no, as it could be, so, I'm not, I know you're not knocking me, so I'm just going to say it's probably, if it is, it's probably just either in the, like, the, uh, the queue, or, it's probably it's in the just queue. been, yeah. it's, it's just all not been submitted yet, it's like one or the other, but, I just couldn't remember what I was going to say for that second bit then, um, Hard gold, soul, silver. Uh, you saying glitchless? Um, I, it was a manipulus room, but from burner a four of seven thirteen. Um, that might even be like that potentially be a race run. I don't, I don't remember what burner got. I was away, I guess that day as well, or like technically on my way back. Um, but either way, still fair play. Uh, do do do. Uh. Daniel in fifth, but any percent off Sapphire on emulator slash NTR. A three oh two fifty two. Congrats there. Um, not the. Was there three GS runs last month? Uh, at least in, in terms of noted. So this is more for etiquette, I guess. But you weren't even here, so. I don't. <laughs> I don't yeah. remember any though. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I feel like the last one probably would have been Head Bob. I don't remember if that was. I feel like we probably had you on for. Was that two months ago? Or three for months? Alpha Sapphire, that was uh, that was in July, so I came on for the, the August one. That was in. Uh, that was in Hawk? I was like. Oh, okay, no, that's two years ago. Was still, I was still mean, last. I was, that, a, I was in ago. Vegas, so I remember. So I was. Yeah, you oh, were in right, Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for for doing that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Once no again. problem. Yeah, I think the I think the last noted run we had was Amoeba. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On Moon, any percent? Yeah. I think it's that would make right. sense. So yeah. Oh, Wurtz had uh, got a Moon run. This month? He did, yeah. He did, he doesn't. Uh, but, boards, yeah, but yeah, Wurtz hasn't oh. submit them. Four fifty one. Yeah. So that'd be third place. Yes. Yep. Congrats, Congrats War -tab. to War -tab. Um, We already mentioned Kick and Run Keith's, but um, cause that was the. Yeah, that was the. the this is an older PD, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> well, it's the. Been... Keith's oh, run uh, was literally yesterday, so just probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah. You wouldn't expect <laughs> anyone to have verified it in that time. Um, <laughs> I say though, uh, 14th though for in diploma for Jay Tuttles and Randall, a five hour and 51 second run. Um, yeah, I, I will say the the Let's Go tournament Discord has just been constantly with people doing races of AOP or diploma or they did an Oak Challenge race. Uh, there's yeah, been, been actually a lot of races in Let's Go lately. It's been really so, sounds like we know what the next one is going to be. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, what was that? Because I cut you off. Uh oh. Oh no, you're good. I was just saying, I was cool to see that Let's Go is still very much alive and kicking. Alright. That is so many diploma runs. 34th, and there's probably way more. <laughs> oh yeah, and like, half of them are at least Joker. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know Joker was aiming to get 20 runs on the board with different people. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, it's awkward on speedrun.com, because like, the it's it's ranked based on the pair of people so like if i did a run with head bob and i did a run with dynam and head bob did a run with dynam all three of those would be there even though like we collectively rpb would just be like the top two but all three runs would be there so it's like it's a little bit weird 
Yeah, it's a absolute pain for uh, PSR ranking stuff. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Spreadsheets and shambles. Uh, even when it's like trying to do like a web version, also a pain there as well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, J tells as well in seventh actually for all the little Pokemon for Eevee, a five thirty one forty eight. And I think uh, Triv's run where she got the absolute god route 15 is a low 527. I don't remember which version he ran. If it, was, if it was Scyther, it was Pikachu. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So that would put her in uh, the new 7th, I think. Who's would guess so. Unless there's someone in between as well. But, um... Crisis in fifth for Galarian Star Tournament, a 721.42. Good category. It's very long, but it's a great category. Is it really? Should I run it? Uh, I mean, okay. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go on. It's, it's any percent with DLC. So you use Sui Kun basically, and then uh, it's there's a lot of the variants because you have to catch the, the legendaries in the Crown Tundra mm, to like okay. do all the story stuff. So that's it's it. it's one of those that's fun to do, but not to grind. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I think it's a good on. category, though. It's a BDSP. BDSP runs. <laughs> Music on. Good stuff. The worst version. <laughs> oh my god. The same version. <laughs> Music off so much better. Furist has made an amazing tool. People should use them all. Actually, no, because that means they have to play BSP. Never mind. Um, wait, wait, but it's like not that bad. Wait, okay, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, BSP, third place for Yoshida Shu and any percent glitchless Shining Pearl Japanese music on. Uh, and then uh, Yuki Sai, a world record for any percent glitchless Brilliant Diamond Japanese music on. A 3.30.44. Everyone's enjoying slots in chat. Cool. <laughs> Legends Arceus run, another Hulk run, any percent world record in Japanese, a 337.29. Um, that is probably one we would have had on, I guess, the Nurse run, but again, make sure panicking it's... and being late. And there were so many Switch runs, anyways. There is a lot of Switch runs. Um,. Yeah, like Halk in third for any percent glitchless and Scarlet Violet. Only like 29 seconds behind as well. A 5.22.59. I feel like I didn't even know that happened. I feel like I got swept under the rug. Yeah, he. he I think uh, I, I was doing an any percent run just to like see what kind of time save there was. And he's like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that we were saving time. And then did a run like the next day. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, but, I mean... Really cool to see a, a time like that on effectively, uh, like, I mean, he's been running Legends, not Scarlet Violet, so just coming out of nowhere to, yep. to right. do that is really cool. Definitely. Well, yeah. I mean, like, Hulk is one of the top runners in general, just between games. Mm -hmm. Like, can just pick up games. Well, I say pick up games, he played it a while ago as well, so it's not fresh. If that makes sense. But, like, fresh to the game. But Hulk is just a great runner and can pick up games quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good times. Iron in fourth on Path of Legends, a fifty-one forty-eight in fourth, and that's only eighteen seconds behind. Dynam's in first. We didn't talk about that. Oh yeah, yeah that's uh, so. That was one of the categories that I tried immediately following us figuring out that uh, there was a switch update. It's been beaten by Crisis already. Um, so oh. this is now the second. Uh, I think Crisis got a 51-1x. Um, yeah, but overall, it's it's just time saved due to uh, like cutscenes and things that are inexplicable. I think this run, if you fast forward to the uh, Tatsugiri fight, um, I think I actually just take a death on Tatsugiri even. Um, I think it went for Icy Wind followed by Dragon Pulse. So Meow Scrower was only able to get one flower trick off. Uh, but thankfully, Greedent finally decides that it wants to land takedown 
at some points. Arvin's screening just like throws like half the time. Yeah, there's muddy water. Uh oh. And yeah. So <laughs> setting up one X attack on Meow Scarada, and then I think so that, that miss, must have been. Mind. Yeah, Flyer Shirt can't miss, thankfully. So That's even nice. though the accuracy drop happens, it lands, and then of course Greeting goes for the tail whip after I use the flower trick, and then this is where Cat dies, and then Greedent clicks takedown, thankfully. Uh, yeah, I think that was the only bad thing that happened in the run. But So yeah, easily beatable, was beat. Um, I think now with the Switch update, uh, Path of Legends, uh, like the 50, like getting to 50xx is possible with like good luck and exceptional play. Awesome. Uh, second Zarvul Yoshitsu A2 2310. Japanese timing, of course, so that includes the beginning. But yeah. Oh, etiquette. Second. Oh, wait, no, we, we covered you. We talked about that. <laughs> Sorry, I, for... <sighs> I forget. It's <laughs> I okay. <laughs> Trains are okay. a thing. Trains are a thing, that's right. I don't even think I can blame that one on trains, that's just me being a fool. Um Dynamin fifth, 14356. And then on the Japanese side, actually uh Carolio with the two thirty three oh seven. Was that the was that the Espathra run or Well that um... wasn't the one we showed, but um probably a more recent one. I imagine. Or is yeah. it not? I'm gonna look right now. I feel like Corolio is stuck with this path, right? Is like the worst point? I think so too, yeah. It's actually that looks like an this path through. Yes. Yep. Space yeah. ostrich. Yeah, fair. Um Yeah, and anybody wondering the uh time difference is primarily just because uh japanese runs start at the beginning of the game uh where we do uh school start uh, and that's actually true for all of the single story categories so you'll see all of the japanese times are about 50 minutes longer because of that hmm. yeah there was a oh, okay i was gonna say there was a snap world records because i was like how did we miss that but then it's this switch so never mind but yes, Quo with the Switch 80% world record, a 2053.5. Um, Switch is a fair bit quicker than N64, from what I heard. I can't remember the difference at this point. But still, fair play to Quo for that world record. Um, that's a fair amount of pinball runs. Yeah, wow. Ruby Sapphire. No one's ever run OG pinball, but for Ruby Sapphire. Like, the guy Megum with the fourth place on defeat Rayquaza on Sapphire Field, a 1436. Andy in third with a 356 for Kashirachi. Solid, solid. Ah, Mystery Dungeon. Was a sky. Many, many world records. Shigama with uh, any percent no one the male Japanese Wii U world record, a 438.49, Eevee and Totodile. Eponymous with an 80% no wonder male Japanese emulator world record, a 435.31. Doesn't say the starters, but I imagine it's still a different starter because I feel like everyone uses different starters between every single run to Mystery Dungeon speedruns. <laughs> Just one of those things. Uh, for example, as well, B Dark Ride no wonder male Japanese uh, Wii U from Shigama, a 735.56. Eevee and Shinx. Um, which. I feel like typically, at least based on why I remember with Eponymous, Eponymous would sometimes just take the any percent runs and just carry them on through for the beat dark right. So if that's still the same case with Shigama as well, that is a different starter lead between the two there. Like the the space of a week. Um but then yeah, Eponymous as well with actually what I think is probably the same run because that would make sense in terms of like the date. Um just carried on though for beat dark ride no wonder mail on japanese emulator a 730 36. 
That's you both there. A Pokken DX tournament world record. Let's go. Any percent. Whoa. First place for Shield, a 221.29. Shield. Shield, it's all full circle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, something we did forget that's happened. Oh, did, I was that last month? It too, yeah. I, th I think it came out last month. I think we mentioned it last month. But still, Detective Pikachu 2. Uh, the leaderboards just opened this month because I remember. The that would be the case, the, yeah. In the Discord, yeah. Yeah, we'll have a look at that then in a second and have a deep focus, like deep dive into Detective Pikachu 2. Um, but first, we'll finish this off. Pokémon Tournament DX Shield with the 221 uh, 21 sorry. Uh, then for Detective Pikachu though, Gonzi with the any percent world record a 50840. Um, and then a couple of um, ROM hack runs, Pokémon Infinite Fusion, uh, Alimura or Alimura with the classic beat gold 5.1 plus version, a 154.24. Uh, for modern any percent for version 5.1 plus, Dullahan with a 133.42. Alimra with a 134.54 and then Modern Beat Gold version 5.1 plus. Alimra with the 220.53 and then last but not least Pokemon Unbound any percent latest version second place for Mythic Dawn a 5 hour 22 second run. Detective Pikachu 2 where is it in here? <laughs> <laughs> is he actually even in this one? It'd be all the way at the bottom. <laughs> it probably would, sadly. There we go. There it's it returns. I keep saying two, but it's returns. Th that is more runs, I believe, than Detective Pikachu. I guess the switch being on switch helps. It's also half as long. It is also half as long. That's actually worth noting. Wow. Go and see with the world record. Let's let's have a look at this. I guess they don't care about language. <laughs> Granted, these are all Japanese runners and one person from Hong Kong. So, I don't think the person from. Are they playing? Are they playing on Japanese? Because it would be Chinese, right, or English? I, yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, either Chinese or English, but failed to determine content. Okay. Un unlucky. Give it another try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Well, <laughs> well, we will never know. <laughs> but in the meantime, though, um, just go jump into the middle. Spoilers for Detective Pikachu returns, by the way, I guess. Hey, look, it's your favorite alt main. And... <laughs> what, Where is the Manitan? I go. I was like, why? Like, what that, why, why what's happening? <laughs> I guess it's just like the being guards. I have never yeah, watched you can... Pikachu and have no idea what the story is. So I I have only seen a uh how was this game? This game came out last month, or maybe I guess technically was it end of September? I think it was the end of September, yeah. Yeah. So um, no, it's not been out long, I don't know. But, um... October 6th, actually. Oh! Did we have a late podcast last month? I think the podcast was on the 7th. Ah, oh yeah, that would make sense, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, no. I saw, I saw one section of this game and it was actually playing it. Um... And it references the movie, and they talk about how like it's so weird. I I don't. It's like they just they reference the movie in a weird way, from like the perspective of or, or like oh they made a movie based off you, and then like apparently like the character has like a sister and a mother in this game, but they're not in the film. So they were constantly mentioned, like they just mentioned, like why why are we not in the film and stuff like that. And that's the only bit I've seen. That's the only bit I've seen of Detective Pikachu, like of the returns, the game. It's just like I have no idea what happens in this. Huh. Yeah. 
And apparently you are now riding a Valerian down the valley town. Cool. Yeah, I'm cool. Alright. I, I don't think I have any insight I can <laughs> Yeah, maybe. I've got nothing. I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think we have anything. But Detective Pikachu Returns does exist. And as long as I remember to put it in the leaderboard roundup next month, in like the script, then it will be there. Um, but yeah. That should be everything. Um, the podcast next month in theory, should be on the 2nd of December. Um, it will depend on the Heart Gold Soul Silver Tournament, of course. So, like, for example, the podcast day is normally on Saturday. Today is Sunday, so we had to push it back a day. So that everyone could finish their races up. But, um... Yeah. Ed Bob, Dynam, thank you for coming on the podcast and talking about Scarlet Violet stuff and... More so, I guess, almost Sword Shield stuff. <laughs> Thanks for having us on. No problem. My pleasure. Etiquette. Thank you for being here as always. Of course, of course. Thank you to Tucker, who is not here anymore. But, uh, is getting ready for GDQ stuff. And then, I hope Ian's having a good time away. I don't remember where he said he went. But, I assume I is having a great time. Where, wherever I is. So yeah. I think with that, that should be anything. Uh, everything, unless there is any last things to mention that I've forgotten. He just started the run, by the way, Tucker. Yep. Awesome. Um, nice. We'll just rage EDQ then, I guess. <laughs> I'm sure they need our viewers. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin making the same joke at the same time. Yep. <laughs> Single green cell there. Uh, but yeah, uh, I hope everyone has a good rest of the day, rest of their day or evening, wherever they are. Stay safe. Take care. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.